Okay, so the topic for today is making a adjustment to the shape of something, which in, in architectural terms is sometimes called morphing, like metamorphosis, but morphing is changing the shape of something. So if right now you have something that looks like this for your entry, and then you have something that looks like this for your main building. And then this is your um, outdoor waiting, right? And then this one in turn has more pieces sort of inside of it, okay? But right now, more than likely, because it's easy to work with, it's probably a rectangle, right? And what was the first and most important rule in working with dynamic polygonal forms. Nope, that wasn't the most important one. So if you do not have this in your notes, then go get a piece of paper and make sure you make a notes. The most singular, most important, excuse me, it was tapering. The single most important aspect if you're trying to create dynamic shapes out of polygons is that they be tapering. That is, they go from narrow to wide. This is now going to be at least the third time that I've brought this up. The second most important thing, which proportion. goes in hand, is proportion. It should have an elongated proportion rather than a boxy proportion or a one-to-one -one proportion. Okay, so now right now this one is elongated but not very much. Right? So right now if I had to do the proportion on this I would say that it's probably maybe one and a half to one. So if I wanted to elong if I wanted to create something that created sort of an interesting shape I might have to elongate that thing more. And so this is the part where it's important for you guys to understand that we start with boxes sometimes because they're very easy to calculate. If I tell you to draw me a box that contains 100 square feet, how big is the box? 10 by 10, right? 10 by 10, easy. So it's very easy to get the square footages of a simple rec a single box shape rectangular shapes not quite as easy but almost as easy right so if I asked you for a rectangle that contained 100 square feet there's a lot of variables right but what about the square is there a lot of variables for the square no you type you go 100 and you put the square root key and it's going to say 10 Okay, so squares are very easy to calculate. So what we want to do with this shape now is we want to begin to keep the square footage but we want to taper it. Okay, so your assignment right now is going to be to print out your diagram that shows your layout. And I guess we need to print it to scale. So what I'd like you guys to do is I'd like you guys to print it at, um, this is 16th, right? Now print it at 16th of an inch to a foot to an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, okay? And then we're gonna take trace paper and go over it and start to sort of morph the shape. Okay? So we're just printing out this... Uh... You're going to print out the, the thing like this, the thing like this that we did in Rhino. Now remember, in Rhino, it's probably three-dimensional. Yeah. Right? So you just look at it in the top view. Yeah. Okay? Make sure you print it to scale. One sixteenth of an inch to a foot. So when I look at that, it's like, okay, well, there's there's kind of one generation of shape, right? Then I could take that, and I can 
in turn say, well, gee, um, this uh, has approximately the same square footage. I took a little bit out there. I took a little bit out there. I added a little bit here, and I've added a little bit right here. So this thing and that thing are both similar in size. Okay. So after we kind of morph it in one pass, we're going to try and morph it on a second pass, trying to maintain the same square footage. And this time, I think I might try something where I have to put a bend in it. Okay, so in this particular case, I now have three alternatives, and that one might be getting a little bit big. So I look at it, and it's like, yeah, it's a little big, so I might have to shave off some. Okay, now if I wanted to try and, again, morph this shape, I might say, well, one thing that I might try to do is to elongate it further. I really do need the yellow one because the yellow one makes it a lot easier. So you see how wide this is? I might say, well, I'm going to try and just make it narrower. Okay, so now I've taken my initial shape and then morphed it into that and from there I morphed it into that and from there it was too big so I morphed it into that. Okay? So there's just this slow adjustment that's going on. Right? After that I might say, well, I like this but maybe I want to put a bend on both sides. So put that back over here, get another piece of trace out. Now I might say, all right, well, I'm going to try and put that bend there. And then I might put another bend on this side. Okay. And in the end, I will have started with a rectangle. And I will have morphed it into a four-sided polygon and then into a five-sided polygon and then into a longer version of the five-sided polygon. And finally, uh, it'll end up in the sequence as a six-sided polygon, right? And I think in each step, as I've gone along, I'm, I'm, I'm most happiest with my last shape, okay? You notice that I'm doing that on my site, right? Whenever you think of your building, you should think of it in relation to the site. So I'm thinking that my buses are entering from this side, so they're going to park on this end, which means that I took my building and I put it towards that side, the side opposite where the buses are. Okay. So right now, that is um, what I'd like you guys to do. So I'll open up the lab and let you guys print out to 8.5 by 11 at 1 16th of an inch to a foot. Please do not take a lot of time doing this because we have to do this in class.